In this video, I'm going to show you how to get RetroArch up and running on a Wii U system. The Wii U is such a fascinating system. It really took Nintendo's dual screen concept and trying to crack it up to 11, but unfortunately the system ended up not being very well received. And it wasn't long before support for it was uh, pretty much non-existent, but thankfully there is a strong homebrew scene for the Wii U, and that includes RetroArch. Now the RetroArch builds for Wii U are very interesting. They're not the greatest, but you are able to play a good deal of systems, but unfortunately none of it really includes the later 90s 3D systems like PlayStation or N64. Those are just not available on the Wii U version of RetroArch as of today. There are bounties to get them added in, but until that happens, we're pretty much limited to 2D games and 2D systems, which is fine. That is still a crap ton of things we could do. We got a lot of classic Nintendo systems, Atari, and even arcade systems like Neo Geo, so there is just a ton we can still do, even without those later 3D systems. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get RetroArch installed, and then I will have separate core installation videos to show you how to get individual cores set up for those specific games. So let's dive in. Now, to get started with RetroArch on Wii U, there are a couple of things you're going to need. The first and foremost is a homebrew-enabled Wii U system. I'm not going to go over how to hack a Wii U, as that is what invites Nintendo to come after your channel, and I'm not going to risk that for this guide. But that doesn't mean I'm going to leave you high and dry. If you head over to the site Wii U Hacks Guide, it has a complete guide on how to hack your Wii U. Start to finish, and how to even add cold boot hack cheating and all that, so you can just turn on your Wii U, it's ready to go. Now, I followed this guide this weekend just to make sure that it does still work, and it does really well, so there will be a link to this in the description. Just read along, do everything it says, and you should come out with a hacked Wii U at the end. As always, hacking your Wii U does come with a certain degree of risk, so do it at your own discretion. If you screw something up, that is on you. So just uh, keep that in mind. Unrecoverable brick potential. Read the instructions, follow along, and you should be good to go. I take no responsibility if you happen to screw something up. But again, a link to this guide will be in the description, so follow along with it, get your Wii U hacked, and then we can continue on with the RetroArch installation. The next thing we're going to need are our RetroArch setup files, so if we head over to RetroArch.com, we can go to the Download tab here. And if we scroll down, there is a Wii U tab, so the first thing we're going to do is download the RPX version, just download RPX Recommended. And after we've got that downloaded, we're going to continue scrolling down here to where it says other downloads, and we're going to go to nightly builds because we're going to actually grab a more up-to-date version of the Wii U copy of RetroArch, but we also need the stable version to actually kind of get the whole thing to work. But once this page loads, click on Nintendo, and then Wii U. And from here, we're just going to find the very bottom one here that just says RetroArch RPX.7 zip, and click on that and tell it to download. And it should give you like a sub number or something here, or if it asks you to replace the current one, just rename it something else. But now that we have these downloaded, we need to get them extracted. They're both in 7-zip format, so you do need to have 7-zip installed if you don't have that already. But basically, you could just 7-zip uh, extract to their own subfolders. So I named these uh, Stable and Nightly, so I can easily show you what files you need from each version. Now, as part of the Wii U hacking process, you should have an SD card. The size of the SD card you want just depends on how many games you want to be able to store on it. So for this video, I'm using a 256 gig SD card. But once these folders are extracted, just bring them back over here real quick. We're going to start with the stable folder. So go in here, open up the folder that says Wii U, go to apps. And we just want the folder named RetroArch, so this one right here just says RetroArch. Once you find the RetroArch folder, we're going to add it to our Wii U SD card. So if you followed the guide that I linked to before, you should have an SD card that looks somewhat similar to this. I have a bunch of extra files on here from Wii and GameCube hacks and things like that. But basically, you should have a folder that says Wii U, you should have one that says install, and then one that might say CBHC if you did cold boot hack but we're looking for this Wii U folder. 
So click on that, and then there'll be an apps folder. So click on that, and we're gonna copy over the RetroArch folder into the apps folder on our SD card. Just like so. And that's all we need from the stable version of RetroArch for Wii U. So I'm just gonna close out of that folder. And then I'm just gonna go back to the root of my SD card here. But now in the nightly folder, there is a folder that says RetroArch, and we're gonna copy this to the root of our SD card. So RetroArch from the nightly folder, so nightly build, RetroArch, root of SD card, so where all your folders are, and just copy the RetroArch folder right there. And this may take a while. And once you have these files and folders copied over, we're ready to take our SD card out of our computer and put it back into our Wii U and load up RetroArch. So just to go over what we've done again so far here, we copied over the RetroArch folder from our nightly build of RetroArch, and we copied that to the root of our SD card. And then from the stable build, we copied over the RetroArch app into our apps folder. Cool. After you have your SD card placed, do what you need to do to be able to launch the homebrew browser, and so if you have cold boot HackG enabled, you don't need to really do anything, otherwise you need to run HackG, or if you have Mocha custom firmware, any of that stuff. Basically, just do what you gotta do to be able to launch the homebrew browser. And once you're in the homebrew launcher, we can select RetroArch, and tell it to load. Now again, you need to be using the stable version of RetroArch if you want to be able to get it to launch. The nightly versions have a bug in them at the moment that makes it so it says that the system memory is aired. And I'm not sure what that's about, but if you use the stable version's launcher, it will boot right into RetroArch, but you still have all of the updated cores from the nightly build, which is exactly what we're looking for. But once RetroArch loads, you should be on a main menu that looks like this. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this version of RetroArch can work with a Wii U Pro controller. I haven't gotten it to work, and it's made me have to delete the config file a number of times trying to get it to work. So it looks like it's gamepad only for now, unfortunately, but that's okay. With RetroArch up and running, we are just going to go over a couple of setup steps. That way we have nice initial settings once we start diving into core videos. So from here, press left to go over to the side tab here, and then go down to settings. And then you can press right, and we're going to go over to video. Now from here, we're going to go down to scaling, and we're going to turn on integer scaling, so that way all of our games will have a sharper output. It will introduce black borders around the screen on a lot of things, but it makes it look a lot better in my opinion, so I like to have it on. You don't have to do this, but I like to have it on, so I recommend doing it. And then for aspect ratio, I'm going to change this from 4x3 to core provided. So it starts at 4x3, you press up on the D-pad, you can change it to core provided. This way all of your games will actually display in their proper aspect ratio because, I mean, Game Boy Advance games aren't 4x3. I'm sorry, neither are Atari Lynx games. So having it set to 4x3 is not right. So change that to core provided. So after you have that set, press B, and then press B again. And now from here, we're gonna scroll down to user interface, press A, and we're gonna go down to pause content when menu is active. By default, this is set to on, and that works for 99.9% .9 of things. But if you happen to be playing a system that needs to change discs, which actually might not happen on Wii U all that much, to be honest, I'm not sure of a system that will need discs, well, I guess Sega CD, do Sega, yeah, there are two disc Sega CD games, right? You know, I really don't know. But anyway, when you change discs, RetroArch is actually a little bit bugged and doesn't trigger the disc change when you have pause content when menu is active on. So you'd basically change the disc, it would be stuck there and not realize that the disc actually changed. So to fix it, you would disable this option here. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable it anyway, just in case there is a CD-based system that actually has disc changes. I'm honestly not sure. I'm drawing a blank on if Sega CD can actually do disc swaps or not, but I'm just gonna go ahead and disable it anyway. But once you have these options set, go ahead and press B to go back out to the settings tab here. Press left and go back up to the main menu. 
and then press right and go down to the configuration files option here, press A, and save the current configuration. This way, every time you load up RetroArch, these are the settings that are going to greet you. But now let's go over a couple of optional steps here. So the first thing I'm going to cover is actually downloading shaders for RetroArch. So to do this, we could go to the online updater and tell it to update slang shaders. So it will start downloading them, but when it gets to the extraction process, it's actually going to fail and we have to manually extract them on a computer. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that process. So here you go. The download is completing right now and it's going to try to extract it. So I can't even move the cursor in RetroArch anymore. It's actually frozen temporarily. And it, as you can see, it said extracting the shaders has failed, which is fine. So basically what I'm going to do now is shut down my Wii U. So I have to quit out of RetroArch to do that, unfortunately. And now I'm going to take the SD card back out of my Wii U and put it back in my computer. And now there's a new shader slang folder here. So I'm going to open this up and there is a shader slang zip file. So this is the shader file that it downloaded but wasn't able to extract. But on a computer, we can extract it manually. So I'm just going to extract it right here. And this will probably take a while. It's a lot of little folders and files. But once that's extracted, you could go ahead and delete the shader slang zip folder off of your SD card. Ta-da! And I'm also going to put this shader slang folder inside my RetroArch folder just to keep my SD card looking a little bit cleaner. It doesn't matter where that folder is, so I like to just keep it all contained. Now there is one more optional step we could do since we have our SD card back in our computer and that's install a forwarder channel for RetroArch. That way you can launch it directly from the Wii U menu and not have to go through the homebrew launcher every time you want to run it. Again, completely optional, but I think it's a nice addition and makes the experience a lot better. So over on GBA Temp in the RetroArch Wii U uh, forum, they actually have a link to a RetroArch channel you could download. So just click on this. I'll have a link to the mega download in the description, I guess. But you could just download the forwarder channel. And once you get this downloaded, you just need to extract it. So I'm just going to get that extracted real quick. And there will be a folder with a bunch of numbers. And inside that is just like apps, tickets, certificates, and things like that. But we're going to copy this folder into the install folder of our SD card. And once that's done, we're done on the computer again. So we could pop the SD card out and put it back in the Wii U. Once we have our Wii U rebooted, we can install that channel forwarder for RetroArch by going back into the Homebrew Launcher. And we could do this by going into WUP Installer GX2. If you followed the guide that I linked in the beginning of the video, you should already have this on your SD card and be ready to go. So you could just launch into here. And you'll see our, well, I guess you can't see it in the video, but you should see the folder name with all the numbers again. So you could just select that and tell it to install. And I'm telling it to install the USB. You could do it on either NAND or USB. I'm choosing USB. And it should install pretty quickly. And after it's successfully installed, you could just press the home button on your gamepad. And you can press the home button on your gamepad again and close back out to the Wii U menu. But now you should have a nice new RetroArch launcher here on your Wii U home screen. So you can just press A on this. And it will launch into RetroArch. And there we go. Just a little time-saving install here. That way you don't have to go into the homebrew launcher just to launch RetroArch anymore. It'll just take you right there. I like saving steps. What can I say?
But that's going to do it as far as initial RetroArch setup goes. This is, again, just for the program itself, getting the program installed, getting shaders installed, setting up our video scaling, and getting a forwarder channel installed if you want it. There are going to be individual core setup videos on the channel, so go check out my main page. You will see a RetroArch on Wii U playlist. You can click on that and find a video for the core that you want to do. If it's not there, it's because I haven't made it yet and I'm currently working on it, so just be patient. This takes time, but I should cover most of the major cores. So as always, if you happen to have any questions, just feel free to ask me in the comments section below, but do try to keep it related to RetroArch. I'm not going to try to help you troubleshoot why you couldn't hack a Wii U or something like that. That is not in the scope of what I am able to help out with. So if you need help hacking the Wii U, visit their Discord channel. They will be able to better help you out for that. This, again, my guides are pertinent only to RetroArch. If you have a RetroArch question, I will try to help you out with that. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like this video. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this go live. It goes a long way to helping out the channel and keeping content like this coming your way. So please, 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 please do it. And then if you're feeling generous, you can also drop that optional support like Patreon and that join button here on YouTube. A little really goes a long way, so I just appreciate the thought. Thank you all for that. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you back next video.